Welcome back to another video. In this video, we will be building DC GAN in TensorFlow. Um, and uh, if you are completely new to, to GANs, check out my introduction to GANs video. And uh, also, this is going to be closely following this uh, written tutorial by Francis Scoliot. So uh, there's going to be a link to that in the description. So uh, the training setup or the folder setup that we have is that we have the data set, set the celeb A data set. So that's going to be in a folder. And then inside that folder, we have celeb A. And then we have um, images like this. So then we also have another folder that's empty with the generated images. So we'll save our generated images in that folder. And then we just have an empty train file. All right, so I'm just going to copy paste in uh, the imports that we're going to use. So these are the imports that we're going to use. Actually, we might not even be needing those two, but uh, who cares? So those are the imports, and then we'll also set a memory growth so that we can avoid even um, you know could errors. All right. So just to create the data set, uh, we're going to be using uh, Keras preprocessing that image data set from directory. And if you're unfamiliar with this, then check out my beginner TensorFlow tutorials. Also, if you want an introduction to the DC GAN paper and uh, sort of where the model that we're going to build comes from, uh, then there's also a video that I've done on that. So this is more um, just coding it in, in TensorFlow. So we'll set the directory, which is going to be the celeb data set. Uh, the label mode, we'll just set that to none because, you know, in GANs uh, are unsupervised. We're not com going to be using the labels. We'll set the image size to be 64, 64. Uh, and you could try larger images as well and see how that works. And then we'll do batch size 32. Uh, we can also specify shuffle to be true. Uh, and then, you know, there are other things we can specify here as well. Uh, we can specify a seed or... Uh, validation split and so on, but we're, we're just going to do that. And on that data set, we're going to be mapping a function, uh, lambda, which takes x and just divides it by 255. And the reason for that is just that we're normalizing. So all of the images are between 0 and 1, or all the pixel values in that image. All right, so let's build the discriminator. Um, that's going to be a sequential model. All right, so the the um, the discriminator is what is taking the the input image and then you know is going to output a, a number between zero and one indicating if it's fake or if it's real. So fake in this case is zero, real is one. So what we'll do, we'll do Keras input uh, shape is going to be 64, 64, and then three input channels, and then we'll have a comv uh, 2D with 64 filters. And then the kernel size is uh, four strides two, and then we'll do a, a same padding. We'll also do a leaky relu, uh, and we'll set the slope of that leaky relu to 0.2. And then we'll do pretty much the same thing. So maybe we can copy this a couple of times. All right, and uh, I guess we're going to change the, the channel. So this is going to be 128. And this is also going to be 128. All right, so then after that leak relu, we'll do a flatten layer. And then we'll do a dropout layer. I don't think the dropout layer is necessary, but that's what they did in the written tutorial. And then we'll do a dense layer of one node. And then we'll have an activation sigmoid because we want to we want this to tell us if the image is real or fake. And that's why we're doing the sigmoid. All right, and then we can do print, you know, discriminator, discriminator dot summary, um, and just see how the shapes looks like and, and stuff like that. All right, so for the generator, we first got to specify our latent dimension. So the sort of the noise dimension that we're starting with. Uh, and then we'll do the generator. So this is also going to be a Keras sequential. And we'll specify the input 
and this is just going to be the latent dimension and then we'll do a dense layer to take it to 8 times 8 times 128 all right so sort of taking that vector into an sort of a 8 by 8 image with 128 channels uh, so we'll do layer reshape and then um, 8 8 and 128 so then you know now it's in the format where we can use uh, convolutional layers but obviously uh, we also have to remember here that for the generator we want to always make the image larger and so there are different methods of doing this but one method is using uh, calm transpose uh, and that'll sort of be the uh, the opposite of using calm layers in that it will make the image larger but that's obviously quite simplified there are other resources to learn more about calm transpose all right so layers conv to the transpose uh, and you know there will be 128 channels and the kernel size is going to be four strides two and then padding we'll just say set same and then we'll do a leaky relu of alpha 0.2 as well and then i'll guess that i guess that we need to you know just copy this a little bit so we'll just change the channels to 256 and then 512 and uh, what they did in that written tutorial is that they did a comp 2d at the end with a kernel size of five and a padding uh, same and then they did an activation of sigmoid i'm not entirely sure why they did that because um, from my understanding that's not what they did in the original paper but i mean it's probably not going to hurt i guess so then we'll just do generator dot summary at the end so i mean what's important here is that you know this is creating it to be an 8 by 8 image this is going to double uh, you know those those specific kernel size and strides is going to double the input size so this is after this layer it's going to be 16 by 16 32 by 32 64 by 64 and then this thing right here is not changing the shape anything all right so that's sort of for the discriminator and the generator now what we want to do now is create the optimizer for the generator so that's going to be keras optimizers dot atom we'll specify the learning rate to be 1e e minus 4 uh, and then we'll do the same thing for the discriminator uh, just a just a exactly identical one and then the loss function that we're going to use is keras losses binary cross entropy and again uh, that uh, I've explained why we or sort of um, looked at the original GAM paper and so on in previous videos so I'm not going to do that here but check out those videos um, if you want to you know understand why we're using this loss function and so on and, and how it works exactly so one thing I'm going to do differently is uh, in the written tutorial they overrode is that how you say it? Uh, yeah anyways uh, the train step uh, and then they could use model.fit uh, I don't I think it's easier to just use custom loops so that's what I'm going to do um, we're going to do for epoch in range of um, maybe a 10 or something and then we'll do for index and then real comma real in enumerate of tqdm of that particular uh, data set all right so the the training of gans is essentially split into two parts where we first train the discriminator and then we train the generator and they are sort of competing against each other in, in that uh, game like fashion so the first thing we do is just check what the batch size is so that's going to be real shape of zero uh, then we'll create uh, we'll generate the fake images and we'll do that under a uh, gradient tape because we're going to be using those gradients uh, computed later on so we'll just do that as gen generator tape we'll compute the late uh, random latent vectors and i guess that's not necessary to do under the tape but we'll do random latent vectors to be tf random dot normal um, and then the shape is going to be the batch size and the latent dimension 
So then under the gradient tape, we'll compute the fake images. So the fakes or fake is going to be equal generator of random latent vectors, right? It takes in these random latent vectors and it produces a fake image. So then we're going to train the discriminator. And the formula for this uh, from the original paper is that we want to maximize log of the discriminator of of x, where x is the real data, plus a log of one minus the discriminator of the gener generator. And I'm not going to go into this in, in too much detail. Um, but you know, um, essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to use this binary cross entropy, which is going to put a minus sign in front of this, and that's going to turn this maximum into a minimization problem. Uh, if this is too detailed for you, then uh, don't matter too much. But essentially, also, we're going to be, you know, we're going to have this part, and then we're going to be having this part, and we're just going to add those two. And yeah, if you want, you know, to, to understand exactly how that works, I recommend you just Google and look at this binary cross entropy, and then compare what we're doing, uh, and see that it's exactly similar to this expression right here. And um, all right, so what we'll do is we'll do loss discriminator of real. That's this part right here. How we do that is we do the loss function of, we'll send in the labels as TF1s of batch size comma one. So essentially, um, there's gonna be, in the binary cross entropy, there's gonna be a, a variable Y in front of this. And so we're sending in Y, the labels to be ones uh, and and so what we're doing is we're essentially taking out this part, um, and that's how binary cross entropy loss is just uh, created. So in front of this part, there's actually going to be a one minus y. So I guess one minus y. There's going to be a one minus y here, and then here there's going to be y times. So in in that loss function. So when we're sending in ones, you can imagine that this part disappears, and we're only having this part right here but um but yeah so I'll, I'll just remove that for now but that that's how it works in the loss function and then what we'll do is we'll send in the real images right right because um or sorry the discriminator of the real then we want to do it on the fake right because that's the second part so we'll do the loss function and that's going to be now TF zeros, right? Because then that this part is going to be removed. So we're, we're going to send in TF zeros of batch size comma one. And let's see, then we're just going to do the discriminator of fake. Remember, fake is G of some latent vector. That's what we already computed above. And then for the discriminator, I will do, just do the discriminator on those fake images. All right, so then we'll do loss discriminator is we'll just add those two losses uh, together. Um, and uh, you don't have to divide by two here, but we can divide by two to, to get an average of those two. All right, so wait a second. We need to do all of this in a gradient tape because we need to compute the gradients. So we'll do as discriminator tape. And yeah, so put everything under under that tape. And then after we've done that, after that tape, we can compute or we can uh, <clears throat> update our weight and we can uh, perform a gradient step. So the gradients are going to be discriminator tape dot gradient of the loss of the discriminator. Um, and then with respect to the discriminator dot trainable weight. After that, we have the gradients. We obviously want to sort of uh, update, and we'll do that by doing optimizer for the discriminator, and then dot apply gradients. And then how you do this is is I do zip grad discriminator dot trainable weight. All right, so that's for the discriminator, right? That's an update for the discriminator. Now we have to also train the the generator and what we want to do here is we want to minimize the log of one minus d of g of z 
And, you know, I'll leave it to you to, to sort of figure out why this makes sense and why, why you would want to minimize this loss from the perspective of the generator. But all right, so uh, one thing that uh, performs better in practice is instead of doing that loss function, which has saturating gradient problems, we want to maximize the log of uh, d of g of z instead. So this just turns out to be a better loss function to use. And how we then do this is we first got to wrap it in a gradient tape uh, as a generator tape. And what we'll do is we'll just compute some output depending on uh, sort of the discriminator of fake. So we'll, we have sent in this fake, we're doing the discriminator on that. And then we'll do the loss generator is going to be the loss function of TF ones of batch size comma one, and then the that those outputs. Then after that, we'll just compute the gradients doing gen tape uh, dot gradient with respect to the loss of the generator, and then the generator dot uh, dot trainable weights. Let's see if we can make this work. Dot trainable weight. All right. And then after that, we'll just do the same thing as we did previously. So optimize generator dot apply gradient. We'll do zip of grads and then discriminator dot trainable weights. All right. So I think one thing that we can uh, fix here is we'll just compute the fake here without doing the uh, with without having that gradient tape. And then right here, we'll just recompute some fake images. So fake of generator of latent, uh, let's see, of the random latent vectors. And you should be able to reuse those, uh, those fake images. So here we're, we're doing the uh, we're computing some fake images, we're doing updating the discriminator, and then we're computing those fake images again. Um, I'm sure there's a better way to do this. But for now, let's just do it this way. And if you figure out a way to it shouldn't be too hard, but to reuse those fake images, uh, let me know in the comment and I'll update the code uh, on GitHub. Alright, so then if we run this now, oh, uh, and I noticed that I made a mistake here, uh, this should be the generator dot trainable weight. All right, and it seems to be running now. Uh, one thing we'll also add is we'll check up here if the index uh, modulus 100 is equal to zero, uh, then we'll just save that image. So we'll do keras uh, preprocessing dot image array to image. And then we'll just take one of those. So fake of zero. And then we'll also do image dot save. Um, and I guess we could do um, generated images in that uh, so generated folder, we'll just call it generated image. And then I guess maybe epoch and then underscore uh, the index. So now we're saving it once in a while, and we can see the progression of the GAN. So one thing you could obviously also do here is use TensorBoard or something like that. Oh, and also we need to add at the end here. So we'll do dot PNG. All right, so I'm going to stop training there because it already seems to be working a little bit, but I'm going to show you sort of what the images look look like uh, if we train for a much longer time. So in the beginning, you know, it's just absolute, maybe I can make this a little bit larger view like, like that. All right. So basically, you know, we can see the progression right here after quite a long time, you can see something that's starting to resemble faces. Um, obviously, this is not, I don't know, this is not very good, but it's still pretty cool. And uh, then the next step for us to do here would be to improve the architecture by using a progressive uh, GAN, and then that'll improve the image quality by quite a bit. But all right, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope that it was useful to you. Uh, let me know if you have any feedback on how to make the video better. And I hope to see you in the next video.